first he left the living We found him sprawled out on the hotel floor Stochastic writing patterns John halfway through the notebook Made up a sequence that I had seen before It said we breathe in the static as they Hello, this is Bill Ray. William Ray to my fine art friends. I was born in 1956. I grew up mostly in Southern California. Now I'm residing in Sierra Madre doing an interview for William Moore. Wait. When I grew up, the artistic influences I had were on both sides from my parents. They're both artists, but they both were never fulfilled in doing their art. My mother was more the type who, she didn't produce her art anymore, but she would take me to art shows. So she was taking me to see modern art shows, like I went to see Ed Rouché when I was like 12. My dreams when I grew up were, I didn't really have any in the traditional sense of like, I'm going to be a fireman or a jet plane flyer or a artist. Finally, when we settled in Southern California, I always was doing drawing, but just never thought of it as being something that I would just do as for a living. And it wasn't until I was in high school and I had to get my first summer job when I was 15. I worked in a restaurant cutting pineapples into boats all day. And I realized that there was something more to life than this. I just thought, I guess I'll do this art thing because it's the only thing I seem good at. My first job as a professional artist was, there was this guy in Newport Beach who had this, he, he, was a, he did industrial films, usually animated whenever he could. He hired an old Disney animator and we put together this little crew and sometimes we would work on his industrial films and I learned how to in between from an old Disney animator named George Gepper who used to, he was an animator on Bambi and he used to do uh, the maquettes for the animators to draw from of Goofy or whoever or Mickey in a statue form and then they would use that to, for proportions and turn it around and look at it. But he was kind of a mentor and he got me into animation and he recommended me for a job and I ended up working at Hanna-Barbera a year, year, couple years later where I worked in the animation business. I found it completely unfulfilling. It was, um, it, when I started in the business is when it was completely dead. Uh, and I worked on, he, the first thing I worked on, one of the first things I worked on was He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. The art direction level was horrible. All you did was trace model sheets. Everybody was an alcoholic. Um, if you needed to find somebody at lunchtime, it would be at the bucket across the street or whatever bar it would be. So I went to the Art Students League in New York, learned how to paint and draw, at least better. One day I noticed this movement, this called this, the plain air movement, going outside and doing a painting of a mountain or whatever. And in that time, I started showing at small galleries and bigger galleries. I used to try to do timeless paintings of nature and leave out the telephone poles. The day I started putting in the telephone poles uh, and went to this urban style years ago, that's where I realized that was my truth. Along the way, I've done different things like um, more recently, I've done these down and out superhero paintings of like Superman waiting for the bus or, you know, uh, the Hulk changing attire, you know, whatever it might be. That is something that resonated from my comic book years along with living in Hollywood for many years and seeing the guys in the costumes playing superheroes and the sort of pathos that was involved with their sad lives but I didn't want to do pop art like Andy Warhol did it or whoever else used used a comic book motif it's kind of a, a metaphor for the failed American dream I've come to realize that what I what I am is just an artist and I do all these different subjects and it's not the subject, it's just going to be what I kind of want to paint and want to explore. I'm now curating a show at the Q Art Gallery Salon in Santa Ana, 
We're having our opening on October 4th. When you see this, the opening will have already happened, but the show will probably still be up. Um, and I think we're going to do a closing. So maybe you'll get to see this and see the closing of the show. My theory about abstract art has always been the best abstract art can be done by people who have an education in being able to draw, being able to paint in a classic, technically good way, and then abstracting from that point or, 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 or um, decon deconstructing is the better word from that point till they reach a simplified abstraction. There's many ways to go about it, but if you can see a good abstract shape, I think that's, for me, that's abstraction that I like. Doesn't mean it's the end all, but it's what I prefer, that it's based on a really simple, strong shape, which is really the underneath of almost all, paint, all good painting, in my opinion, it's design. How would you like to be remembered? Um, I, I guess I just want to be remembered as a, I don't know, a, a talented person who was left something of value behind, something that people like and can value.